Hi students, this is the first chapter of your lower sex science, which is scientific endeavor. Okay, and then some of the knowledge you have already learned it in primary school, and we are just going to continue to build on the knowledge that we have learned. Okay, so scientific endeavor essentially is like how do we deal with everyday life activities and then how do we use science to actually explain or develop a curious mind about it. Okay, so we will obtain information as we interact with the world that is around us. So when we interact and things happen or, you know, people tell us certain things, we do not just take it as it is. We always try to pose questions. Okay, if you are not sure, let's just pose the questions and then we will start generate some ideas. Okay, so the question will always come first based on the interaction with the work. So if I do something, then what will be the result of it? Okay, propose a hypothesis based on this observation and then this hypothesis needs to be tested. Okay, hypothesis should always be based on what you think will happen. Okay, but it should also be based on research and prior understanding of a proven fact. Meaning to say your hypothesis, don't go and pick random things out of nowhere. Okay, we always have to do some research first. And now you can research online, it's very easy. Make sure you do research from trusted sources. Okay, so a hypothesis is a statement that links the question, what changes are being made and what is the effect of this change together? Okay, and then after that, in the lab, we will go and test the hypothesis out with apparatus. Okay, so for example, in a real everyday today life scenario, right? My sister and I, okay, my sister, she spilled a glass of water. So I will go and try to wipe it dry. So when I'm trying to wipe it dry that time, maybe you can think about this. Will paper towel absorb more water? Will it wipe better? Or will cloth towel wipe better? So I shall do some research about the material, cloth and paper. Okay, and then I will plan an experiment to test it out. Okay, so when I'm planning the experiment, definitely there's the independent variable and the dependent variable. So independent variable, right, is what I change. Dependent variable is what I observe. So what I observe will depend on what I change. So that's why what I observe is the dependent variable. And in this example, what I observe is the amount of water, it is the dependent variable. And then what I change is either I use paper towel or cloth towel. Okay, and when we do the experiment subsequently, we will present the results in data. Okay, so we will present the results in data. We will use graph, charts, and tables. Sorry, we will present the results in reports. Okay, and we will use graph, charts, and tables. So how do we present it in graph? Usually this is my line graph, the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis will be the depend independent variable. So in this example, the cloth will be here. The type of cloth will be here. So I can have, for example, uh, paper cloth and then towel cloth. Okay, and then y-axis will be what I observe. So y-axis, this is the amount of water. Okay, plot a graph for that. Okay, later another video we will talk about graphing methods as well. Okay, so when we present the data, when we present the information, right, we have to present it accurately and precisely. So let's look at these two terms. Okay, precision and accuracy. Okay, so this uh, blue chart over here, okay, bull's eye, right? If I shoot a dart and if I'm accurate and precise, all your darts will be at the center, at the bull's eye part. Okay, but if you are very, very precise but not accurate, it's off the chart. Okay, it can be somewhere off the circle, but they are very precise, meaning to say they still all cluster together. Okay, but it's not at the center where it is accurate. Okay, or when I shoot this 
uh, darts, I can also shoot it in this way. Right, so this way, right, they are all kind of clustered at the center, quite close to the bull's eye, but they are quite spread out. So they are quite close to the bull's eye, it is accurate, but they are spread out, so it's not precise. Okay, so using a real life example again, if I have a coin that's 5 cm, I use a ruler and measure it, and then I measure it and it's 6 cm. And then I repeat the experiment, I measure it three more times, it's 6.1, 6 cm, 6.2 cm. Okay, so all these are precise. Okay, because 6.1, 6.2, these are very close. Okay, but they are not accurate. Not accurate meaning to say this is not close to 5 cm. Okay, so as a result of this, I have system error. And this system error is due to instrument. So it could be that my ruler, something wrong, and it's due to this instrument error that it is not precise okay in another example same thing the coin is 5 cm and i'm using a ruler to measure and i repeat it three times when i measure it's 5.2 5.3 5.1 so 5.3 is a little bit more spread out already so but it is all close to 5 cm okay so this one will be something like this okay it is spread out but close to 5 cm meaning to say it is accurate but it is not precise because it's spread out. And most of the time, these errors that we get is due to random error. Random error, meaning to say it is human error. Okay, so be clear about this definition of precision and accuracy. Okay, precision, this is close to the values. The values are close to each other, sorry. And then they are not accurate and this uncertainty is due to instrument error like my ruler error okay accuracy is close to the correct value the true value they are close to true value but they are actually quite spread out okay so it's accurate but it is not precise okay and this kind of error is due to random errors which is human error Okay, so how do I improve accuracy of these experiments? Repeat these experiments to obtain the average result. Huh? When I obtain average result, this was minimize human error. How do I improve precision to make sure that your equipment has no errors? 